Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance and in this video we will cover factors that acutely influence lifting performance and what this means for hypertrophy training. First and foremost, let's discuss the relationship between lifting performance and muscle hypertrophy. Well essentially, lifting performance is a good measure of muscle hypertrophy. This is because there are three primary adaptations that drive improvements in strength, one of which is muscle size. The other two are neural efficiency and lifting technique. Because the neural and technical adaptations occur quite quickly, once a trainee becomes reasonably proficient at an exercise, the primary driver of lifting performance will be increases in muscle size. So lifting performance becomes a tool to track hypertrophy progress over time. So what exact measures of lifting performance are actually reliably indicative of muscle growth occurring? The best measure we have is performance of any standard hypertrophy exercise in the 6 to 20 rep range, when the lifter is fairly fresh. Tracking performance in the 1 to 5 rep range is probably less reliable because lifting heavy is a specific skill that requires practice, so very heavy loads will be highly influenced by technical and neural adaptations compared with training in more moderate rep ranges. We ideally want to see improvements in load lifted in the 6 to 20 rep range over time, or increases in rep performance with the same load. So if performance is a measure of muscle growth, what happens if lifting performance doesn't improve over time? Does this mean we aren't growing muscle? This is not necessarily the case, because there are many different factors that influence lifting performance in the short term, which don't mean your training is not effective. Let's now explore some of these factors which can influence performance from session to session. The first is rest periods. It is fairly obvious that shorter rest periods limit the ability to recover and performance will be reduced for the following set. On the other hand, longer rest periods allow more recovery between sets and will promote better performance in the following set. So when we compare our performance to last week, we may have rested shorter or longer between any given set, hence why performance may improve or decrease. This doesn't mean we aren't performing effective hypertrophy training, it just means that we haven't cleared all the metabolic byproducts from the muscle tissue and we can't get as many reps. Although as long as each set is taken to an appropriate proximity to failure, the specific rest period doesn't matter to any significant extent. The next factor which can acutely influence performance is technique. The goal with hypertrophy training is to perform the technique which best stimulates the target muscle group. This is different to strength training where the goal is to perform the technique which allows the most weight to be lifted. Therefore, if we make technical changes to an exercise, we may not be able to use as much weight or lift as much load. For example, we may reduce the load for a seated cable row and really focus on performing the movement with strict and effective technique to hit the mid-back. On paper, this looks like we have decreased our performance, but in reality, we are actually getting a better stimulus to the back muscles. The next factor that can acutely influence lifting performance is intent. Simply put, if we are more intent with a given set, then we are more likely to perform more reps or lift more load. On the other hand, if we are less intent, our performance may not be as high. This may be due to emotional reasons or due to stimulants like caffeine. When comparing performance to other weeks of training, this may look like we have improved or decreased performance, but it may simply be due to our intent on a particular day or for a particular set. Another factor which can influence lifting performance is tempo. Tempo refers to the speed of both the eccentric and concentric portions of the lift. If we lift with a slower tempo, performance is generally lower than if we performed a lift with a faster tempo. However, for hypertrophy training, we generally want each repetition to be controlled so that we are maximizing tension on the target muscle and minimizing elastic recoil from the stretch shortening cycle. So if a trainee changes their tempo, this may influence the weight used or the repetitions performed. Another factor which can influence lifting performance from week to week is acute fatigue levels. This could be due to a number of different reasons such as fatigue from exercise or work outside of resistance training, psychological fatigue from relationships or work, or systemic fatigue from hard training for an extended period of time. Acute fatigue can inhibit performance slightly due to a lack of motivation or physiological fatigue, but can quite easily increase once again through a period of reduced training load like a deload. The next factor which can acutely influence lifting performance is the environment you were training in. It is common to get a slight boost in performance when you are training in a new environment or with a training partner who is there to motivate you. This doesn't mean you have all of a sudden grown new muscle, it just may be that you get a performance boost from the environment you are training in. Another factor which can influence lifting performance is nutrition. For more advanced lifters, a calorie deficit can inhibit performance over time and a calorie surplus generally results in greater strength gains over time. 
This may be due to a raw decrease or increase in muscle mass over time, although it also may be due to other factors too. For example, changes in leverages may occur as a result of gaining or losing body weight, which can impact lifting performance. Furthermore, nutritional practices can influence lifting performance in the short term. For example, a trainee may perform a training session after a highly restricted day of eating, causing glycogen to be somewhat depleted the following day. This could potentially inhibit performance compared with training in a fully glycogen replenished state. And the last factor which can influence lifting performance in the short term is sleep. While one night of poor sleep doesn't seem to impact performance too much, a few nights in a row definitely can. Therefore, if trainees have not been sleeping well for the past few nights, lifting performance is likely to be somewhat reduced compared when training in a well-rested state. Once again, this is not necessarily indicative of changes in muscle mass, it is simply an acute variable that can result in changes in performance. So what does all of this mean with reference to hypertrophy training? Well, there are a few implications this has for training and tracking lifting performance. The first implication is to make sure that we are actually stimulating the target muscle in each session. This means the focus should be to perform the exercise in the most effective way. This means the goal is not to try and beat last week's performance at all costs, it is to get the most out of training with the session that you have planned. This means we shouldn't deviate our technique, rest for a long period of time, speed up the tempo and take each set to absolute failure just to beat the logbook. This also means that trainees shouldn't be afraid of lowering the weight or performing less reps than before if it means the stimulus is going to be more effective. Therefore, trainees should focus on training effectively and performance should naturally improve over time as a result. And the second implication is to use long-term trends in performance over time as opposed to week-to-week -week comparisons. As we explored, there are so many variables that can influence lifting performance in the short term, which means that it is not always an even playing field when comparing performance one week to performance the next week. Unless trainees are very new to lifting, it is unlikely that performance will improve every single week. Instead, we should be looking at long-term trends in performance over months and years, as this gives us a more accurate representation of how muscle growth is trending. If lifting performance is consistently improving over months and years, then this is a good sign that the trainee is growing muscle mass. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.